the Seat Leon Cupra R here on our exclusive IAA Motor Show coverage on Autogefühl, your number one resource for in-depth car reviews and your number one community to discuss cars with me, Wes Thomas. This video here is a special with the Seat Leon Cupra R, the new top sports version. But also we're going to talk about two other topics. The TGI engine, the new CNG strategy, because it's also available for the Leon, to show you the span between you know the eco-friendly TNG and also the high top sports spec. And we also talk about the digital cockpit, the new digital gauges, which will soon be available for a lot of Seat models. So all of the details, sporty engine technology and infotainment. Let's go in full HD, full screen and full length. So looking at the front, the normal Seat Leon has already a very sporty look. Here it is accentuated not only by the Cupra logo, a dark front grille and then this copper applications and carbon fiber lower spoiler. Be careful with that, you should not damage it because carbon fiber cannot be repaired, it has to be replaced and then it gets really expensive, so watch out for that. Also the car sits 10 millimeters lower and the chassis has been you know stiffened up the suspension to give you even more sporty support on the road we will talk to sven sven schave the um, you know the, the head of whole vehicle development about the engine very soon let's take another tour around on the exterior and also on the interior so copper elements also in the side profile here also at the alloys 19 inch pretty spectacular and also with a stronger bigger Brembo brakes here as we usually have in the performance package which is available for the normal Leon Cupra. <laughs> yes it is hatch, not available as an estate and not with all-wheel drive, just with the front-wheel drive to bring the weight down. Other than that you have the typical design line right here and this matte paint. You can hear how it feels. Really interesting um, to touch it also. So um, definitely a very unique look to the Cupra R and of course this vehicle also has history because also in the previous generations there were Cupra R versions which were very desired actually. Maybe this one will be too. Looking forward to your feedback. So pretty spectacular in the rear with also carbon fiber diffuser right there and two massive exhaust pipes and those are real, not any fake or decor cover real exhaust part as sporty car fans would really expect from such a vehicle. By the way, 799 pieces of this one, and then it's done. And let's take a look inside. First of all, inside of the doors, very interesting. There's a special uh, cloth cover, which is designed in carbon fiber. And I mean, it looks like carbon fiber, but it's a soft material, really interesting. And also the other parts, so it's just a little bit softened up. This one here is also a little bit softened up, just the lower part is hard. Then Cupra entry cap right there. And then, oh, come on, my favorite feature here, the microfiber steering wheel. It's really good in normal driving as it's, you know, warm in winter and cold in summer times. And you have really good grip also with a kappa contour stitches on the inside. And of course, this is all sustainability proof. Also with the seats, those ones are the performance seats, you know, for the Seat Leon Cupra. There are two sport seats available, the normal ones with separated head restraint. We've shown that in several reviews and this one here, the performance seat with integrated head restraint, which has a disadvantage in the rear, has a little, little, little bit less space in. Here, again, with this carbon fiber cloth, you can call it that way, as a special accentuation, leather red on the outside, so also good, no animal has to suffer for that, for your sporty driving. Then let's get inside. And, well, I mean, it's 
like in any other Seattle and Cupra. Um, to me, those uh, normal sports seats are, by the way, m you know, more comfortable if you decide to go for a normal Seattle and Cupra. Here, this one here always comes with the performance seats. They are still comfortable, yes. Um, but again, it depends on you. For, for example, some other of our team members say, ah, oh, you know, I'm more happy with the uh, performance seat here. So I think it also depends on your body. You can adjust the steering wheel, like this. Wow, and those, this is copper elements, like, you know, there's a Seat logo that it's really pretty bright here also. And um, I think also special is that those uh, gauges here, we will soon take a detailed look on that, they have a special white background. So I can put the steering wheel lower, then Jonas can maybe film that better. Here, yeah, those gauges here, wide background, so pure racing style, that there's more contrast to the speed. Because when you drive this vehicle, you better l check your speed that you don't exceed the speed limit. You know, that, that happens pretty fast. And maybe, have you seen already, also copper elements around uh, the air vents. So, yes, I mean, most of the parts are visual changes. It's a special edition, but again, I mean, it was really desired in the past. Maybe this one really will also be, especially after uh, seeing this interior here. And now the cockpit overview. Here again, I think it's uh, nice that we have repeating design languages on the outside and on the inside. Also pretty horizontal, flawless design, soft touch on the top dashboard, again with the copper accentuations here in the special edition. The digital day gauges we will sh show you very soon. This one here is standard analog as I uh, just showed you, but about digital gauges in SEAT, we will have soon a special part for that one, how the future will look like this, because also the Leon will get the digital day gauges. Then if we look further down here in this uh, interior, what is special here for this edition? First of all, manual gearbox, but it will also be available as DSG. And here also microfiber around the shifter to have more grip right there. Also an interesting idea. And then, um, moment, let, let me put the, maybe to the, what is it, second gear, yeah. Um, then you can also see a um, limited edition sign here that this one here is then one out of 799. I would like to have number one, don't you? Or number seven, maybe, 007 of 799. <laughs> or seven of nine, that would also work, right? So it wouldn't be a full static review if I not only, you know, if I forget to check the rear bench and the trunk. So just very briefly, by the way, also here, special edition, even in the rear part, you have this carbon fiber style cover. Then knee room, totally standard for a compact class car. Again, if you not have the performance seats, just the normal ones, it's a little bit more. Headroom without primary groove for one means 86 or six foot one totally sufficient and also in the rear with those microfiber seats and the carbon fiber elements so nice that they carried out the design scheme also to the rear so if we flip this copper logo we can also take a look at the normal trunk this hasn't changed of course and well you can put anything in there also replacement tire the sound system is in there and probably things in here will be shaken around by the 310 horsepower from the 2-liter TSI turbo engine. And now we are explaining you more details with Sven Schaver from Seat, whole vehicle development. So, I mean, obviously, visually it's different. But, you know, apart from the visual parts, what is different on an engineering perspective with the R version? Uh, first of all, it, it must be visually different. Uh, that is one of the main objectives of, uh, of this project. Um, in, in terms of technique, uh, you can see several additional parts, but you ask especially for the, for the engine performance. So in the manual uh, version, there is a slight power increasement to 310 horsepower. And we did uh, some adjustment in the chassis to adapt it more to a racetrack, uh, better racetrack behavior. Uh, and it is a limited series and of course um, it is, uh, let's say, a, a car where we would like to express a little bit more the luxury aspects of the Cupra. So as a race driver, you know, we had this discussion before, sometimes you would go for the front wheel drive to bring the weight down instead of an all wheel drive. Was that also, also a thought to bring it in that way? Or did you also think, ah, shall we go for the all wheel drive in the R or what do you think? 
No, this is especially decided to, to offer this version only in front wheel drive, as you tell, said, to, to, to have the weight uh, um, performance uh, and the weight reduction uh, compared to the all wheel drive version, and uh, therefore this is a light, lightweight uh, performance car and um, only available in front wheel drive with MQ, so manual transmission, and of course with our double clutch as well. Maybe you can show me your favorite part of this vehicle. What's, what's your favorite here? Oh, there are many favorite cars. I, I like the steering wheel in Alcantara, uh, but when you are outside, you can see here. Uh, let's say one a very important thing is, the, the, let's say, are the copper um, uh, applications. So the outside mirrors, here the intakes, uh, and uh, even the Seat logo now in, in copper. And um, many additional parts uh, here in carbon fiber. Uh, like the front lip and the rear spoiler and the rear diffuser. So is this your next company car? Um, unfortunately, as I said, it's limited uh, to 799 cars and uh, I, I don't think so that there will be a car left uh, for a company car. Really too bad. Maybe let's take a look in the interior because you said you, this is actually your, your favorite. Yes. So. So maybe you can tell me you know, some special elements where you're extremely proud, proud of here. Yeah, the, the changes you see in the outside, uh, um, you can see in the, in the inside as well. Uh, as I said, uh, the Alcantara uh, steering wheel, here again the copper application, the diffusers and the Seat logo. Um, the Alcantara uh, gear shift uh, lever, here you can see the uh, limited edition and this is the first car of the 799. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, changes in the uh, door trims. Uh, so I, I think we touched many, many parts uh, to, to make it different, to make it more uh, expressive and to make it uh, more valuable um, um, compared to the, to the standard Cupra. And even you see the instrument cluster as a special application uh, with this uh, wide dials. Uh, so in total, many, many changes uh, to say this is uh, to bring the Cupra brand uh, to the next level and uh, to prepare the Cupra brand for the projects that are coming in the future. So is it already sold out or could I still get one? No, um, it is, um, all cars are distributed to the dealers, but uh, I, I think it's possible to get one, uh, but you need to be quick. So uh, any price hint yet? Um, yeah, the prices uh, are available and they are, depending on the version, uh, about 43 to 44,000 euro. So about the engine, maybe we can uh, take a look at the engine, let's um, just open it. Because, um, I mean, obviously 10 horsepower more, so uh, how you usually do it, just like, is it fine tuning in the software department or how is it solved? Yeah, the, let's see, let's open it before. Yeah, so the engine, the engine is uh, is the same. Uh, this is a well-known and uh, very performant um, Cupra engine, uh, and it's of course uh, possible to make uh, increasement uh, in power with some with some detailed um, adaptations. And that's what we realized here with this 310 version in the in the MQ, so in the manual one, and the as I said, the double clutch version um, has the same power than the standard Cupra with 300 horsepower. Uh, any figures, uh, 0 to 100 kilometers now, is it the same as the normal Cooper or is it even a little bit faster, you know? No, it's, uh, it's in the same range, it will be about uh, 5.7 uh, seconds from 0 to 100. I think that should be enough. However, I, you know, I thought about at the moment Seat has a strong CNG strategy and would it actually be possible, just theoretically speaking, to get a performance vehicle from a CNG engine? Is such a thing possible? It, of course, it's possible. Um, this is at the moment not decided, um, but uh, at the moment we concentrate on several alternative CNG engines. We already have the Mi and the Leon with the CNG engine in serial production. And today here we present uh, the Visa and Arona CNG concept. So for us it's a CNG rollout and uh, we are uh, quite happy to, to present this technology here and we would like to push it as uh, far as possible because this is a very interesting uh, alternative uh, drivetrain solution and a very efficient and cheap one as well. So the Leon, I mean it's already available for quite quite some time as a CNG engine. In Italy it's re yes. running really great. I yes. think Luca De Mio told me like about 50% about already mm -hmm. sold mm -hmm. in, in, in yeah. Italy at least. Yeah. Do you think it also has more potential for other of your big Seat markets? 
Of course, of course. That's, 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 that. We would like to, we like to, to push the CNG uh, technology. Uh, we will do everything that is possible uh, to, to bring the technology to the customer. And as you said, the Italian customer for for for, for them, they, it's, it's totally normal um, to to drive a CNG engine. And uh, in other in other brand in other markets, we see still some um, yeah. It's difficult to explain, but 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 you need to you need to to test the car yeah, and you need to feel confident. Uh, and um, I could explain a little bit more about the CNG strategy. We have one model here sure. uh, and you see all the different components and uh, we could go through it. And um, sure. yeah, I do my best let's take a look it. at it. Perfect. And here we are with the TGI cutaway model. First of all, looking at the engine, how much different is it from a normal TSI engine? It's nearly the same. So this is a TSI engine, as you said. Uh, with uh, some adaptations, um, uh, you can see here in this uh, Kappa color, um, yeah, for, for to, to ensure the injection of the CNG. Um, and, and this engine uh, is capable to, to use a normal gasoline um, uh, fuel and, and the gas fuel, and you will not recognize while driving uh, in which condition uh, the motor is at the moment. So at startup, first the petrol engine is active, maybe to heat it, the engine up a little bit, or maybe if it's even like warm enough, then directly the CNG will start, or how does it work, that transition? It depends a little bit on, on the temperature conditions. Um, uh, in most cases, it will, it will use only CNG. As long as uh, the CNG tank uh, uh, is full or the CNG gas is available, it will use the, the CNG gas. Uh, in very cold temperatures, the, uh, the engine will start with the gasoline uh, fuel, as you said, for some minutes and then switch automatically to the, to the CNG. So let's take a um, look at the fuel tanks. Yes. Um, what do we have here and what about the capacity? Because so far, strategy has often been to make like even, like same range of petrol and CNG. And now I think we are steadily switching towards more CNG range and less of the petrol one. Yeah, important is uh, this is a so-called bivalent uh, version. That means uh, we have here the CNG bottles <laughs> and uh, the normal fuel tank and the full capacity. So this car offers both solutions at the same time. So you have 40 liter of gasoline fuel here, and you have two bottles. Uh, every bottle has a capacity of about 6.6 .6 kilogram. So in total, you have more or less 13 uh, kilogram uh, CNG. Uh, and this um, leads to a range of about 390 to 400 kilometers with the CNG uh, and about 800 kilometers uh, with the gasoline fuel. So in total, um, the, the mileage range of this car will be about 1,200 uh, to 1,300 kilometers without refueling. So this is quite interesting. But the objective it should be to, to make as much as possible uh, on your way from, uh, with, the, with the CNG gas uh, because it's much cheaper and better for the environment. So uh, with the other uh, T TGI models you have, will it yeah. be different that you can have more range with CNG even than with a petrol engine in the future? Yes. Um, so this is the actual version. In the future we are developing um, solutions with more CNG capacity and with a reduced uh, gasoline fuel tank. Uh, so, so we will move in the future from this bivalent version to a monovalent version, but this is uh, something uh, for, the, for the coming years. And at the moment, I think, and especially for the uh, actual perception of the CNG cars in the market, I think this is the best solutions uh, because you do not need to fear that you do not find a filling station for CNG because you have 40 liters of gasoline fuel available. And, and, and therefore you have um, autonomy that is uh, quite impressive. And, and, but on the other hand, we have to, to, on the other side, we have to realize that there are about uh, 900 fuel stations uh, in Germany available for, for CNG. So, uh, but it shouldn't be a problem for no one to find uh, a CNG station. So one advantage is that um, the CNG burns relatively cleanly. So yeah. um, also when you look at the exhaust, it's actually, you know, you could really put your finger in and it's like it's yeah. not dirty. Yeah. So you can really see it. Um, will this also ultimately bring the price down in comparison? Because you need more filter technologies for the normal combustion engines and you don't need it here. So will it also be that CNG cars will be actually maybe cheaper in the future than the other ones? 
Yeah, this car, um, and when we talk about uh, the Ibiza, um, is at the moment uh, 800 euro cheaper than the uh, diesel one. Uh, and uh, in the German market, um, there is a um, special price reduction of additional 2,000 euro. So, so at the end, this is a very good offer uh, um, to go in that direction uh, for the customer. It's uh, quite a um, cheap solution. And as you said, it's uh, good for the environment. Uh, this car is an emission in the Ibiza uh, with this engine of 88 uh, gram uh, CO2 per kilometer. That is uh, compared to the gasoline engine uh, minus 25% more efficient. Uh, when we talk about the NOx uh, emissions, it is about 30% better. And when we uh, talk about particle emissions, there are nearly no particles. Yeah? So in all these three components, CO2, NOx and particles, this is a very, very clean uh, engine solution. And then therefore, we, uh, as I said, we try to, to push it as fast as possible. Thanks so much for the insight. Thank you. So one interior part of the new interior concept will also be that we'll have the digital dashboard, optional, available of course. We are now at the moment in Attica with Sven Schave and you can maybe show us what are the new features here in the digital cockpit with the Attica and maybe also about the other models. Which models will when get mm -hmm. the digital gauges? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first of all, um, this is for us the uh, switch from the let's say, normal hardware-oriented combi instrument cluster uh, to the digital world. This is uh, programmable and uh, you have uh, the possibility to change diff the different modes. Uh, first of all, uh, everything is done with the buttons on the, on the steering wheel. Uh, for example, now I can in integrate here the navigation uh, system. So this is more or less a classical view uh, with the, let's say, the two instrument clusters on the sides. And here I have a view button and then you can change, for example, to the uh, it's a full screen version um, of the navigation. And uh, here with this small roll, then I can change the zoom factor. Huh? So uh, what you can do is um, to navigate if you want uh, with two screens uh, with the combi cluster uh, and with your normal radio navigation screen uh, for example here you can have um, the birds view uh, and uh, here you use the 3d uh, view and um, but you can see here there are some uh, 3d uh, animations and buildings uh, integrated so it's uh, quite uh, easy to, to navigate with this uh, and um, there is another reduced uh, third uh, mode uh, where you have some additional information on the left and on the right side and you have the chance to, to select what do you want to see. So when we change uh, here in the car um, menu the, um, the instrument uh, cluster option, so there is an out of view um, and a classic view where we have, uh, let's say, the, you know, the, the the, the yeah, equivalent the, like it would be the one. yeah would yeah. like it like the yeah. analog digital i call yes. it <laughs> yeah, yeah so this is a classic view uh, but you can change here to to other views and then you see here you can uh, have additional informations in the center of these circuits and you can select what you want to see uh, for example at the moment we have on the left side here the consumption and uh, you can change it um, to an acceleration and then you see it here, uh, this is the acceleration and deceleration of the car. You can uh, show uh, the actual audio file and uh, whatever you want, uh, the driving height and, um, and other things. And on the right side as well, uh, so you can adjust uh, the combi cluster uh, to your needs uh, as you want and as I said, uh, to change from one to another setting. So it's quite easy, it's uh, super flexible and uh, it can be adapted to the driver needs. I think it's very important that you can actually have you know both screens at the same time, maybe also yes. for a co driver because we've seen with the Polo and the T Rock at the moment it's not possible with the new um, system here. So here it is actually. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's um, you know also good good for the customer. Mm -hmm. um, just to show you again here on camera, this is working and still at the same time on mm -hmm. the left side. Mm -hmm. So the Ateca will be the first vehicle to receive this new system. Um, will it like? start right now and when will it follow for the other models? Yeah, in the Ateca and in the Leon this uh, new instrument cluster will be available beginning of next year uh, and in the Ibiza and Rona uh, it will be available later on uh, but in 2018 and uh, uh, of course uh, I think more or less uh, in the middle of the year uh, for those two cars but, but we start uh, right now with the Ateca and uh, Leon and will be in the market at the beginning of 2018. 
So 2018, the year of digital cockpits with Seat. Um, can you already say, tell us something about pricing? I know, I think at uh, VW it's about like, I think 800 euros extra if you go for this option and uh, will it maybe include in the highest trim level or something? Uh, at the moment we can't, we can't uh, uh, say this, so this is in, uh, still under discussion and the prices will be communicated uh, in the next months. Okay. Thank you so much. And I think, you know, um, do you already know, I have some experiences, how many customers would go for that? You also, you know, looking at other brands. I mean, there's a reason you're offering it. Obviously, you expect to go, you know, that a lot of customers will go for it. But do you know, have any expectations? And it's, it's difficult to say. I think this is a technology where the customer has to get in contact with uh, first. You know? I, I think uh, for the future, like with many other um, technologies, new technologies, this will be the future because it's much more flexible, it's much more, uh, more modern, and, uh, but, but the customer has to get used to it. Um, so um, let, let's wait and see. Yeah? We, we think it's a very good, it's, it's a nice, it's an intelligent uh, technology and uh, we believe in that. And um, I think the, the take rate will, will increase uh, step by step in the future. Thank you so much. And we want to hear your feedback, of course, what you think about the new digital gauges. And if you're already a SEAT customer, I know a lot of our viewers are actually also driving SEAT themselves, then tell us, would you actually go for it in the SEAT? Looking forward to your feedback. So now to our conclusion, SEAT Leon Cupra R and also the other SEAT new technologies. I think it's very interesting wide span. We have you know, the top sports model here now. I hope you liked our feature of that one. But that we also have a new CNG focus by SEAT. I think it's a really right strategy for the mid-term solution because from the well-to-wheel results, you know, from energy investment and how you know production works and later on, it's actually the best solution CNG cars at the moment. You know, in the long term run, it will probably be electric cars and F, you know, fuel cell cars, whatever. But at the moment, CNG would be a good solution also when you're in an urban environment and countries who support that and have, you know, the fuel station, that would really work. That you have, for example, you know, the CNG Leon as an everyday driver and the Cooper Leon as, you know, like one and a half vehicle. Because it's also about price, not everyone uh, will be able to get the very Cooper version. But of course, if you're interested in the Cupra R, you have to be fast and also give us your feedback if you go for this R or if you rather go for, you know, hatch, front wheel drive, DSG, manual, or maybe then the estate version we've shown you with all wheel drive and DSG. Be sure to check out that review too. And also tell us what you think about the digital cockpit. I think it looks really good. It also has, you know, a lot of versatile functions. It's not a must have, but surely a nice technical feature and good that it will soon also be available on all the different SEAT models because there's, you know, always a lot of people asking how to fuel on several models. Will this be available with the digital cockpits? So we got the answers for you here today. And of course, tune in for our next IAA Motor Show episodes.